Hi guys, it's Stefan McMillan. And Justin, don't come for me if I didn't send for you, Watson. <laughs> and you're listening to episode 8 of Exposure, a half hour sit down with some of All Mind's newest and exciting content creators. And tonight our guest is Jay. And let's start the show. So for tonight's show, the best show ever, we're going to have, we're going to start off with how to get away with YouTube. And then we're going to answer a question in sidebar. We're going to talk about some content that we really love. And we're going to get into an interview with Jay. But don't forget, we'll have more after that with our obsessions. We'll have some tips for you. Do you have an article? <laughs> Yeah, of course. I'm always prepared. And we'll have an article for you, allegedly. Here we go. First off with how to get away with YouTube. And for today's how to get away with YouTube. (laughs) We're going to be talking about when people record vertically. And sometimes people that don't record vertically and still have the black bars on the side. One, stop recording um, vertically. Come on now. Cameras have been around for how long? You got to get used to this, my now people. Every, and I know people have their phones, but the phone has this thing called a cellulometer. Okay, I think that's how you pronounce it, a cellulometer. What you call me? <laughs> 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 phones nowadays have this thing called a cellulometer. I think that's how you pronounce it. But what that is, is like when you turn the phone, it knows it's on the side. You know, you don't have to go and configure something. You just turn it and it's like, oh, we're on our side now. So record horizontally. Well, I feel like I see that a lot more with um, amateur YouTubers or like Viners or people that make videos on Instagram. I don't think I've seen like any serious YouTubers do it. I'm not really talking to them. I'm talking about to the people recording the fights. Like when we do (laughs) Cataquan... (laughs) <laughs> we need y'all to record properly, okay? Oh, so you want Steven Spielberg quality for the fights? No, I want basic quality. They're giving me below basic. You can plug in your cable into the TV and get NBC. That's free. For free, I should be able to get something. It's not like the technology. It's not like we need skill. You need a degree. Just turn the phone. But also, it's not even that. It's more like when you record vertically, not only... You know why with the fights, especially, they're not standing in one spot, okay? So if your phone is horizontal, if they move, they'll still be in the shot. You have more time to react. Same thing if if you're doing a vlog. If something if someone's doing something silly in the vlog, you'll have more time to react. Or they may already be into the shot. Come on, people. Logic. It only takes a couple seconds to think. People just need to try it, okay? And for for and for the people who are actually serious about YouTube with the black bars on the side, it is 2015. All right? It is 2015. Now, I ain't saying you got to be HD, all right? But come on. Widescreen. Like, do they even make... TVs that are not widescreen anymore like all TVs are widescreen now well I will say this because I know that you don't you're not really a big fan of Apple who? what? (laughs) (laughs) a lot of people when they record on their I guess uh, their MacBooks or whatever and you try to import it into YouTube or if you record directly from your MacBook onto YouTube a lot of times it doesn't import full screen it imports um, the regular size so For them, what do you think they should do? Um, Render in four six. If you don't have fast internet and you're not, um, are what do you mean? Are they uploading it directly, or are you saying they import it into the software and then it's like it changes it? No, like they go to the YouTube 
upload section and they record their videos straight from their webcam like that. Nobody does that. That's why. Nobody. YouTube Direct? Never. Never. One, if you make a mistake, it's already up there. <laughs> if you forgot, if there's something happened in the background that you didn't realize yet, it's up there. Okay, I'll say this. Like you said, it doesn't have to be HD, but not every like webcam or whatever you have is in, in, in widescreen. So. so you render in 460p widescreen. Then it's going to look those stretched out and stupid. It, only, it would only look um, stretched out if it's horizontal. I mean, if it's vertical. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and that was how to get away with YouTube. And we'll be right back with the interview with Jay. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hi ho folks, this is Turwinkle of the Adventures of Turwinkle, the gnome mage at youtube.com slash palmerbomber1, and you're listening to Exposure. And we're back with our guest, Jay. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. So I'm curious, what made you create your own channel and I guess get started on YouTube? Well, I first actually started back in the RuneScape days, uh, just making some random stupid videos. But then I didn't really uh, post consistently or anything like that. But then um, about two years ago, I saw a video of one of my friends. He sent it to me and I checked out his channel and uh, I got inspired by that. So... I decided to start up my own channel, and uh, I've just pursued it since then. So, how did you come up with your channel name? Uh, actually, it's one of my friends who wanted me to join his friend's clan, and the suffix, sorry, the prefix was beast, and then I couldn't think of anything else to put, so I just thought of, okay, JF2020 seems okay, so I just put that as my PSN ID, and then uh, sort of just stuck with me for YouTube as well. Actually, my channel name was different earlier, um, or before the whole... Uh, Google Plus and YouTube thing. It used to be the J2341. And again, that also came from RuneScape days when uh, that used to be my RuneScape name. So, um, I know it's your channel. A lot of Call of Duty. What do you think of, like, the industry's, like, first-person shooter games? I've tried playing a couple of different first-person per shooter games, but I find that the engines themselves, like, they're not as smooth as Call of Duty. So, at this point, I think that um, Call of Duty and Activision, they're sort of at the top. Um, but I do feel that with the recent Call of Duty games, they've been pretty bad. Like, I have not even bought Call of Duty Advanced Warfare because I just did not like the idea of it. And I bought Call of Duty Ghosts, but I might have, like, a couple of hours played on it. So I think that, like, the idea of a first-person shooter is amazing. And I think that as soon as other companies, like... Um, EA and Battlefield, like, they're as soon as they improve their engine and everything, that... Call of Duty and Activision are pretty much going to be gone soon. So, Call of Duty is, like, a really large, like, community of YouTube. Do you find it hard to make types of videos that... I mean, there are a lot of people that make videos already, but even even in the niche, there's a lot of people. So, do you think find it hard, difficult to make videos? Well, I guess I don't really find it difficult to make the videos themselves, but to get them noticed, that is definitely a challenge. Um, so I've tried to recently diversify my channel into a couple of different games, my, mainly just GTA and Call of Duty, because uh, what I used to do before was only Call of Duty, and I found that there was a very, very limited number of people who were coming in watching my videos. And so in order to try and satisfy more people, um, I tried posting two different games. So if if people are only posting Call of Duty, um, there are a lot of just main YouTubers who post only Call of Duty, and so most people will just go to them. And it because of the sheer amount of people who are posting Call of Duty, um, it's pretty unlikely that someone is just going to, you know, stumble across your channel like uh, they might have in the old days. Um, what would you say is essential in for starting a YouTube channel? For starting, I would say it's really necessary to want to do it. Um, 
like a lot of people you'll see on their videos, they, they have like how to grow a gaming channel. I do that on my channel as well. But um, you'll see that most people, they start off saying by saying that the number one most important thing is to have good video and audio quality in the beginning. And well, yeah, I guess it is true. I don't think that it's important to have like the best video and audio quality. If your content is good, if what you're like talking about in your commentaries is good, then I don't think that the quality, like the physical quality of your videos that are that important. Just be passionate about whatever videos you make. Just have fun doing it. And um, I think that's the most important thing. I noticed that you started a series on your channel. Um, it, I guess it's kind of helping or giving advice on how to and um, grow your channel. And I had a question about, uh, do you have any tricks and tips for YouTubers? Like they... Something that's not commonly known? Um, in terms of stuff that's not commonly known, I think that a lot of people, they notice these things in bigger YouTubers' videos. They just, um, you know, when it comes to making their own videos, they may not implement them. Um, for example, let's say when you make a video, you know how after the intro you have like a nice transition, maybe not like anything fancy, just a nice fade in. People notice that subconsciously, but they tend not to implement it a lot of the time. And so you have this like rough transition from like one clip to another. Um, it's just small things like that. I feel like it's really the small things combined together that make a really good video. Um, another thing is like um, a lot of people, their intros are extremely generic. So if you just search up right now on, on YouTube, like free After Effects template, then you'll see like 10,000 different videos. And the first few are the most popular, obviously. And then a lot of people just tend to take those templates and just, you know, change them and make it uh, suitable for their own channel. And then it's it sort of has to do with originality, I guess, um, where you need to be yourself and not try to be super generic, I guess. Um, another thing, like thumbnails. A lot of people I see, and like a lot of newer channels, they don't put any thumbnails on there. So there's no way of knowing. Like People, they don't spend that much time reading titles anymore. I know when I'm looking up videos on my um like my subscriptions tab. I don't read all the titles. I'll just look for a thumbnail because I know I've I've started to recognize like certain YouTubers have certain types of thumbnails like um Face Jev or yeah, his thumbnails always have a picture of his face and then whatever else the video is about. So mm -hmm. a lot of people don't seem to pay attention or enough attention to these small details which I think are more important than the bigger picture. Well, you just mentioned you had GTA on and I'm always curious about people that make gaming videos. How much time do you actually spend playing games in your free time versus online for your channel? Um, when it comes to me, I'm I'm like one of those really studious people who will uh, put schoolwork before most things in general. So the amount of free time that I get is very limited. And um, the program that I'm in is extremely, extremely demanding. So it's... Pretty rare that I get free time, but um, whenever I do have free time, I'll try to divide it up as best I can. And a large part of that does go towards gaming. Um, like now, my my school year is coming to an end in uh, like a month and a half or something like that. So after that, when I actually have some free time, I'll definitely be gaming a lot. Um, when it comes to me, like I don't. When I'm playing games, I might just have my computer sitting there to record. Like I may not even be going for something for my channel. I'll just be. Are recording me just playing normally, and if I end up getting something, that's great. If not, then I guess I'm, you know, there's no like sense of that this time was wasted not getting a gameplay or anything like that. Um, when I play, I just play to have fun, and it's it's like that even when I'm going for a gameplay. Like I don't like go for gameplays. If I get something while I'm having fun playing, then that's what I'll use for my channel. What are the top three games that you do play? Um, I play a lot of GTA and Call of Duty. Um, I, I won't separate the Call of Duties into different games. Um, but the third most game, like most, my favorite game that I play is actually chess. Um, I play a lot of online chess. What are some things that you do outside of YouTube? Um, well, a lot of my time, like, again, like I said before, is taken out by schoolwork. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I do some martial arts. I have a black belt in Taekwondo, so... Uh, that's always really fun. Um, and other than that, I do some volunteering here and there. And uh, yeah, because I have to travel a lot to get to school as well. So a lot of my time goes there, unfortunately. Mm. I like cooking, uh, if that counts for anything. It does. <laughs>
So um, a lot of YouTubers have been expanding like their brands or empires or I don't know what you want to call them. Um, and they like Shane Dawson's wrote a book, um, Grace, a bunch of them. Even yeah, even Joey has wrote a book allegedly. Um, so <laughs> it's just his book came out really fast. Um, would you write a book? And and would you use a ghostwriter? If I were ever to write a book, then I think um, it would most likely be something like a textbook because, like, I'm really into school stuff. I am I like I love learning stuff, and when it comes to making stories, I guess like that's not really my type of thing. Um, and I don't really know if I'd use a ghost name or not. Um, I really don't know. I've never really thought about it um, at this point. Probably not. Because, like, people don't really know my full name, so I guess it really wouldn't matter anyways. If you could have a YouTuber's login for 24 hours, it could be any YouTuber, and you can do whatever you want. You can do something mean, something nice. Whose channel would you want? I think I would take KSI's channel, and I would just upload a video, any sort of video that supported the Spurs. Um, I don't really know exactly what, like, I know I know it's a sports team, uh, forgive me if they're extremely popular and I don't know, but I literally, like, before we started this call, um, I was just watching random KSI videos, and uh, one of his Q&As, um, basically, his mom, it, one of the question was, what would you do if your fa- you woke up one day and your family were all Spurs fans? Basically, um, you just see him wake up, and then his mom walks in his room, and then she says, um, I'm a Spurs fan, and then he pretty much just, like, in GTA, takes one of those pills, and yeah, um... <laughs> ends up like pretending to die so yeah i'd probably upload one of those videos just to mess with them so i uh, Oh, i see you have a Oh collection video um I, i'm a like i'm old school Oh. so what do you think of like the new Oh? like with the what are they the synchro and I don't know, they have some new cars now that look like hybrids between spells. Honestly, and... I don't even follow it anymore. After the second season, I just stopped watching. The one with Jaden, like, I watched that entire series, oh. and I watched the entire series with Yugi. But after that, it just got so bad that I just just didn't watch it. Like, Same here, I haven't. What? I heard about, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D, yeah. and all that. Yeah, I've, I've watched, like, maybe two episodes just, like, in the morning before I go to school because there's nothing else on. But, yeah, other than that, I don't follow it at all. I just don't like it. So, why do you think, like, they declined, though? Like, do you think, like, what hap- What do you think happened? Well, it's sort of the same thing with Pokemon, where there you can see that there's a huge demand for it, but then they just keep producing so much that they eventually run out of good ideas, and they just run it into the ground, sort of, where they just try to produce as much as possible. They don't really care about the quality of it. They just keep trying to produce as much as possible just because people are still watching it. Um, I feel like actually Avatar, uh, the last airbender and like legend of Korra, they've done it correctly. When that series first came out, I was, I was really, really young, like maybe, I don't know, seven years old and probably even younger. And they didn't run that series into the ground just cause they didn't keep on producing episodes. Like people love those series and they've sort of idealized them just because they haven't ruined them yet. Um, and by, by continually just producing season after season and episode after episode um like has been done with pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. so i mean i guess i'm sad to see that Yu-Gi-Oh is sort of declining because it was a pretty big part of my childhood like when i was in middle school that was the cool thing like everyone used to play Yu-Gi-Oh when at lunch and stuff there, there were kids who would literally to save their cards they would take off their jackets in the middle of winter put them on the floor and then play I wasn't that crazy about it, but there were definitely people who were that crazy. So it is kind of sad to see that's declining. But like all in all, I guess now that's declining, I, I just sort of moved on from it. Would you consider yourself a super fan of any TV shows today? Pretty much any Marvel TV show, like Agent Carter, Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., not so much anymore. It was pretty like good at the end of the first season. But yeah, now not as good anymore. Um Suits. I love Suits. That's a really, really good TV show. Suits um, is amazing. Yeah. Uh, the Flash. That's pretty good. Um, uh-huh. What else is there? I used to really, really like The Walking Dead, but um, I feel like it's sort of the same thing's being done just like with Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon where they just sort of run into the ground now. Like, and They're on their fifth season, but um, yeah, it's, it's like 
they just keep producing episodes for the heck of producing episodes. Um, there's another one, White Collar. Um, they only had five seasons, but that was really, really good. I ended up watching all five seasons in the span of one month. It was that good. <laughs> yeah, but The Walking Dead, I feel like they're recycling like the same theme. Like, oh, we have to travel, travel, travel. Oh, we find this place. It's horrible. Oh, no. And it's like, okay, we got to travel to the next place. Oh, it's horrible. And it's like, can you, is there something, there's nothing else? Exactly, exactly. Like, in the first season, what was it, Um, where they got, uh, where where that farm got, like, uh, run over oh, yeah, by. yeah, Herschel's farm. Yeah, Herschel's farm. And then the second season was the um the prison, right? Mm-hmm. And then the third season, I can't even remember, but, um, yeah, th- this is the exact same thing again <laughs> and again. <laughs> Oh yeah, going back to your previous question, um, Legend of Korra and Avatar, like, extremely huge fan of those two. Okay. What about music, in terms of music? My taste in music is pretty weird, actually. Like, if I find a song that sounds nice, then I'll, and has a really nice chorus, then I'll like it. Generally, like, I only have one or two songs from, like, an artist on my phone. Um, I, I, like, I don't like artists, per se. I like the, their music. I may only like one or two songs from each one, but yeah, I, I have an extremely, extremely like specific taste in music, which a lot of people don't share because a lot of the type of music that I like listening to is like seven to ten years old. Um, the new new songs these days are just, I guess, not my genre. So I guess for the final question, I have to ask, if someone asks you why should they subscribe to your channel, what would you tell them? If they enjoy my content, then yeah, for sure, they should subscribe to me. Um, other than that, like, I don't know. Like, if you enjoy my content, then that's the, like, when I go to subscribe to somebody else, like, that's the only thing I see. Do I enjoy their content? Do I enjoy their personality? If yes, then I'll subscribe. If no, then I guess not. Um, so yeah, I, I would say the same thing to anyone watching this video or any of my other videos. If you enjoy my content, then yeah, for sure, subscribe to me. But if not, then I guess. It doesn't really make sense because you're not going to watch the videos anyway. So <laughs> it really wouldn't make sense. All right. Thank you so much for coming, Jay. We'll be right back. Thanks for having me. It was, it was pretty fun. Hey, guys. It's Stefan. Hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Justin and I are now making it easier than ever to get your exposure fix. Along with YouTube and iTunes, you guys can now check us out on TuneIn, Cast Roller, and Double Twist. Just search Exposure with Stefan McMillan and Justin Watson. And now, back to the show. Hi, I'm Thorne from www.youtube.com slash THRNEM8, and you're listening to Exposure. And we're back, guys, with Obsessions of the Week. And my obsession is Supernatural, guys. I re-fell in love with this show, all right? Um, I remember I binge-watched. I had seen... I, I used to watch it way back in the day, but then I stopped watching it for a while. And then I um, binge-watched from season one to season ten. And then I started to become a weekly watcher again, which sucks. You ever binge watch something and then become the weekly watcher? Oh, it sucks being the weekly watcher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that oh, with Shameless. I did that with Shameless, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like getting demoted. It's like, oh, I can do whatever I want. I can pause. I can do whatever I want. I can watch 10 episodes. I can watch four. I can watch a hundred. And then you get to the end, you're like, oh, I got to wait till next week. But anyway, this show, it has its up and ups and downs. I, season one through five, solid. No matter what Steven, a.k.a. Stefan says. But, you know, it had its dips and stuff. But it's an amazing show. Amazing. Um, go watch it, people. It's been on for so long. Go watch it. I'll give it another try. I'll give it another try. Okay, I'll give Brittany another try. Cool. Nah. <sighs> My obsession of the past few weeks, actually, but I haven't talked about it, is Ross Matthews' podcast called Straight Talk with Ross. Um, 
I love this show so much. It's long, but like if you're like working on an essay or doing a project, just put it on and like time flies by. He's so funny. The show is so entertaining. Um, I don't know because I wasn't really a big fan of him on Chelsea lately, um, which is where he's, I guess, most known for. And he had his own talk show on E! But um, I don't know. I just like how everybody works together, the entire cast of the show. They all seem like friends. It's really entertaining. I like it. That's my obsession. I do like Ross. I never watched him on it. I never knew him before. On I seen him on um I well listened to him on Shane Dawson's podcast. And he <laughs> said he had a podcast. I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, that's how I found it. And then I was like, oh, this guy's amazing. Wait, so you that's the first time you've ever heard of Ross Matthew? Yes. Hmm, okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Because, no, yeah, I've seen him on Chelsea lately the most. And apparently he was on NBC or something. And he wrote a book, a book too. But, um, yeah. Yeah, he was on um, The Tonight Show. Yeah. Now, I will say, when I say I'm a TV show lover, right, I don't mean any TV show, right? I don't, I mean, I do like Jimmy, but I don't like the whole show. So I just watched the YouTube clips. Oh, you know what was crazy? Y'all remember last week when I said, um, I went to the YouTube thing, the YouTube, and there was, you know, there's a guy teaching the class. One of his friends runs the Tonight Show channel. Oh. I thought that was cool. I know, right? But anyway, um, I like scripted TV. I used to love me some, um, reality TV. Yes. I used to love the flavor uh-huh. of love. I love New York. Yes, yes, yes to all of that. But now I can't watch them now. I don't know. Not the same. Yeah, I hate. Um, what's that called? Love and Hip Hop. I hate that show. Hate it. Yeah. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm back to like, and for some reason I'm gonna be real. The scripted shows seem more real than the reality shows. Because at least the reality shows are scripting. I mean, not the reality shows. The scripted shows are scripting to reflect realism. While the reality shows are are scripting to... Yeah, I said it. Scripting. Scripting to... I don't know. Like, whose reality is that? Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not a big fan of reality TV anymore. But I do like... uh... Was that, uh, the challenge because it's not about all the drama it actually is about showing their skills i was kind of a fan of the x factor uk and um because once again that takes talent it's not all about the drama so i mean i guess those counts as reality tv shows but it's not ignorant i think did you ever see that clip of that lady telling the world's best joke no it's a black lady with short hair <laughs> no if you can look that up, I'll I'll do the joke now, but um, go along with it though. Uh, <laughs> are you guys all right? Yeah. No, you're all left. You know what? I think that's better than our world's best joke from a few weeks ago. She had an accent too. I think it was British. Oh, was that on um Britain's Got Talent? I don't know. It was on one of them. They all the same show. I know, I know they're not, but still, they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. All right, guys, once again, we've come to the conclusion of our show. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to connect with us more, follow us on Twitter at Exposure Show and like us on Facebook at Exposure Pod. That's Exposure POD. If you want more content, you can go subscribe to us on YouTube. At youtube.com slash slows in your face. That's I N Y A face. If you want to even go another step for, um, further, go to our blog at exposurepodcast.blogspot.com. Thank you so much for our guest, Jay, for coming. Please go check out his channel on YouTube. If you want to even go the extra stretch, people, these are our fans. If you like our show, please. Give us a rating on iTunes, or you can even go to patreon.com slash slowlist, and you can donate to us and make the show last forever and ever, like Mariah Carey's career. And we'll see you 
next time on another episode of Pause.